An eclectic music therapy approach for adolescents. Online screencast created and read by Bo Voisey. The domains in which my eclectic music therapy approach can involve and evolve adolescents includes cognitive behaviour therapy, CBT, evidence-based practice, EBP, psychodynamic music therapy, and Nordoff Robbins creative music therapy. This eclectic approach is suitable for use within a music therapy setting for adolescents and older as the analytic and self-regulating skills that this approach elicits suits those who can reflect on the therapy. Highly effective when working with adolescents because it gives their understanding and opinion the opportunity to give insight into the therapy and interventions undertaken eliciting a stronger engagement in and out of therapy sessions. In this presentation, I will explore these four domains and their direct application to adolescents, both individually and as an amalgamation. Cognitive behaviour therapy and its application to adolescents, an active, directive, time-limited, structured approach used to treat a variety of psychiatric disorders. Cognitive behaviour therapy is a structural therapy approach to which the adolescent area of the lifespan best fits. It intends to give insight into and give practice methods for identifying thoughts, behaviours, feelings, life situations and physical systems to evaluate these things and to consider and even adopt alternative thoughts and behaviours. By having a shared understanding of the issue and reason for music therapy through the lens of cognitive behaviour therapy, we are able to enact transference and countertransference quite simply through the verbal quality of therapy giving more power to the music and its inherent therapeutic qualities. The self is illuminated through the adolescent's response and engagement with the music. As music therapists are often part of a multidisciplinary team, they too must engage in EBP to inform their clinical decisions. Evidence-based practice is a rather grossly misunderstood form of research and theory and practice. So people misunderstand what evidence-based practice actually is and basically say, well, I know what's best. It must be evidence-based practice. And this just isn't the case. Mostly, and the best way for enacting evidence-based practice is to do the six-step assurance method, which follows as first you ask the question and it's got to be specific to your client. Then you research knowledge specific to your client. You critically appraise the quality and applicability of the gathered knowledge to your client. Then you discuss the research and results with your client, assessing the fit of effective options with your client's values and goals. From these four steps, you can create a therapeutic alliance and then implement the intervention. Mixed method based EBP. To thoroughly extract the best EBP, one must use a mixed method analysis of qualitative and quantitative data. This is to say that one must not only look at the both sides of the coin and the coin's edge, but also at the coin's value, both physically and in the money system, etc. Wilbur's integral model provides four epistemological perspectives concerning ways of knowing reality, which we can use to categorise and thus assess qualitative and quantitative research data. Triangulating the results via these four perspectives gives further insight into the research and data's practical application. There's also a matter of individual evidence versus collective evidence. Individual evidence speaks for itself. It's evidence which proves itself. Evidence giving evidence. Collective evidence is evidence which sits in the middle of a whole of the whole sum of evidence. So it exists as part of a greater. It it proves something as long as everything else around it is doing its job and proving the same thing. So individual evidence could be like evidence that that guy was stabbed is that he's now dead. Collective evidence would be that guy was not stabbed, he was shot, and that's why he's dead. And we know he was shot because this guy over here shot him. Resistance to evidence-based practice. There are a number of things which evidence-based practice has wrong with it. For example, the 
therapist may be naively realistic in the idea that his intervention was greater than the sum of experiences his client had that day or before, henceforth. So it's like one day the client might have found a dollar and so he walked to his therapy session after finding the dollar and he was happier but the therapist didn't notice that and so at the end of the session the therapist does notice that he's happier and puts it down to his intervention to his practice and this is bad bad you know it's it's not evidence-based practice it's naive realism on the right, we have the hierarchy of Oxford University Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine. Pretty much all medicine, medical practitioners, everyone who lives in the academic world runs on this table, which at the top we have 1A, which is a systematic review of several experimental research studies, and they all have the same results. So this is this one will have that this is bad and this is good. This one will have that the same thing is bad and the same thing is good. Everything fits. It's like a puzzle perfectly put together. At number five, at the bottom of how evidence is created, expert opinion. Expert opinion. As in, some guy said this is how it is and everyone believed it. Evidence-based practice applied to adolescents in music therapy behaves as proof or substantial grounds for accepting the therapeutic setting. As most adolescents will be sceptical of treatment from those who have a pre-existing condition which requires specific music therapy intervention through to your seemingly regular and average adolescent, people in this area of the lifespan believe in what they can see or that which has concrete evidence. Psychodynamic music therapy explores the world of the psychodynamic within the music therapy realm. It focuses on process while acknowledging the importance of technique. It, address, it addresses questions of meaning, recognises the impact of the patient's past experiences on the present. It's aware that although patients strive to change, the therapeutic process engenders resistance that must be overcome before change can occur. It uses music to weaken senses, thereby facilitating the expression of unconscious fantasies and to be perceived as non-threatening, and as music is perceived as non-threatening, thereby facilitating involvement in a therapeutic process. Being analytically based, using meaning and understanding, psychodynamic music therapy applies directly to adolescents as they tend to overlook themselves as they have so much stigma and interference with their development of what their self is. It uses psychic determinism, determinism, psychic events influenced by previous ones, all are meaningful, giving the adolescent a sense of purpose or reason for what they are experiencing in each domain of life, from social through to cognitive. Dreams are significant, giving meaning to the different psychic realms and exploring them through music helps the adolescent come to terms with reality and what it is. Rodolf Robbins' creative music therapy also gives insight into the practice of this eclectic music therapy approach as it provides the fundamental core of the self and that the self is fundamentally engaged when practicing music and engaging with music. So the Nordoff Robbins creative music therapy approach and part of this eclectic approach is simply the improvisational quality of the music. This approach utilizes an improvisation method within therapy setting to get the client to be more trusting, to be more expressive, to let go of any preconceived ideas or notions of the therapist and therapy and to begin delving into what they are and how they feel and what they want to express. In conclusion, the four research domains work synergistically to inform and evoke the best result when working with adolescents. The open platform of EBP and structured approach of CBT to explore the psychodynamic realm within which music is experienced through creative improvisation-based musical engagement allows for expression and understanding of the self, leading to insight into the other, both for the therapist and the client. 
Giving these tools to children who are just entering adolescence may allow for the development of truly feeling, understanding, evaluating and critically engaging adults. The creation of creative, self-understanding people who in turn shape the world to be all the qualities they inherit from this eclectic approach towards music therapy.